When did you first uh, meet Stan? Well, uh, probably when he first uh, uh, entered the law practice, and but I think more intensely uh, when he became a mayor. And he became mayor at a time uh, when I was, I think I was chairman of the legislature and a town supervisor at the same time. And that really is what I wanted to chat about uh, when the time is appropriate. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, I think at that time the uh, city had an unemployment rate of about 10 percent. In fact, our county too. And uh, But most of the employment is in the cities. But we were having a terrible time. Uh, Art Metal uh, was having uh, labor problems, but really they were really having economic problems, and they finally went defunct. And that's what I'm going to be talking about a bit because uh, Stan Lindane and I played a big role in attracting that company here. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, uh, uh, attracting Cummins was, uh, I think, probably one of the most important things that he did in his lifetime, uh, working to attract them. Uh, and I was just going to explain a little bit of how uh, that all came about whenever you're ready. Oh, yeah. Or if, well, you don't have to record it if you don't want to either, or don't need to at this time. You can decide it later. Here. Well, we'll start recording, and then that way, like, I can use it, especially in his early career. I think it'd be really helpful to have more insight there, because you can go online and find all about his time in Congress and Lieutenant Governor, but there's not much for when he's here, so whatever you have to say is, yeah. I think, very important. Well, this is uh, in about the 70s, uh, uh, Art Metal uh, had uh, an operation uh, where they uh, manufactured uh, uh, office equipment, metal office equipment. And uh, they were one of our largest employers in the Jamestown area. Uh, well, they, um, because of poor management, really, uh, a series of bad decisions, poor decisions. Um, they, after they built a, almost a million square foot building in the uh, town of Bustai, where I was town supervisor, um, long after they, well, long after they built it, I take that back, really short time after they built it, uh, they started going downhill. They did have a union, they were having some problems, but the union was not the problem. It was uh, management and poor management decisions. They ultimately went belly up, and uh, the few hundred people that had ended up working there at that time lost their jobs. Uh, and probably some 700 before that lost their jobs uh, uh, in the move and with other poor decisions. And what that meant is we had an awful lot of homes here where the occupants who had been working at Art Metal had to go hustle for work. Yeah. Uh, and it was a pretty tough time for them to, for those folks to find jobs. Uh, the uh, in fact, there's a whole story about uh, Art Metal. Uh, I think the title is The Rise and Fall of a Corporation. And it was written by the daughter of a man who had worked there some 30 years, uh, close to 30 years, and lost his job and eventually lost his home. And he wasn't the only one who lost his home. There were other, others, too. So that was the 
biggest problem facing Stan Lundeen and me and other leaders, but actually uh, facing the general public. Um, folks were struggling to work, to find work, and uh, the work they did find, um, in most cases, uh, really didn't have the pay, the compensation mm -hmm. that the people had hoped for. Well, what uh, with Cummins, uh, the thing that really impressed them greatly, that uh, helped them make their decision to come here, was the Labor Management Committee that Stan had uh, created. And he created it because we had strikes and uh, uh, labor management tensions, and it was pretty difficult to attract companies here if you had uh, potential labor forces that were involved in strikes. Uh, so he said that enough is enough, and uh, he uh, created this Labor Management Committee, and it was made up of uh, labor leaders as well as uh, executives in the, in the companies, and they would talk over issues, uh, resolve, try to resolve general uh, issues uh, rather than uh, take their battle out in the streets. And uh, that system uh, did impress uh, Cummins. Uh, they had a uh, plant in Indiana where uh, I think it was maximum occupancy as far as labor is concerned. Uh, but uh, they needed to f find uh, an additional uh, facility, and they had focused on the West Coast. Uh, this is now what what's going on while our metal is going down the tube. So the Cummins uh, engine uh, uh, people had narrowed their uh, sights to about four sites, five sites, or or more, but uh, not many more, in California area, in the West Coast. And uh, there was a traveling salesman who had, uh, this is a theory that we, we are pretty sure is reliable, uh, a traveling salesman who served uh, the needs of industries throughout the country, and and he had, had learned of Cummins wanting to expand. Mm -hmm. uh, well, he uh, had stopped at a gas station up in uh, Busti, and I don't know if you're familiar with Busti. Is that right up the road, or well, it well, is up the road, on, yeah, close to the Pennsylvania line. Okay. Yeah, and. Uh, uh, the, uh, he lived in, in the town, uh, too, I learned later on, uh, but he, uh, uh, let, uh, a gas station owner there that he's a good friend of his, John Siggins, know that, uh, there was a need, um, for, or that Cummins was looking for a place. Now, at that moment, Art Metal, the plant, the brand new plant, was empty. I mean, it was no longer being uh, used except for occasional birds and, uh, and <laughs> mice and God knows what else. Uh, so, uh, at that time, there was a gentleman from Busti, Earl Lawson, who uh, was on the town board, and he called me up as town supervisor, and, and said, "Look, uh, this uh, this guy told me that uh, Cummins Engine is looking for a place, and we ought to make some moves to see if we can get them here." So I called a special meeting for that very uh, the next day. And uh, we then, 
I got in touch with the uh, uh, labor management. Well, no, we got in touch with the uh, industrial development uh, gentleman who worked for us, uh, and said, "Look, these folks are uh, looking for a facility that would be interest might be interested in our metal." And so uh, we that that next day uh, we called uh, the art metal. I'm sorry, we called no. comes in. And I'm trying to get this all out because yeah. uh, I don't know how much time you have. So I have the rest of the day. I have nothing um, booked. <laughs> all right. Well, scratch a lot of what I've just said. Anyway, the. Uh, so we called uh, uh, Cummins folks and uh, uh, we talked to uh, the gentleman who was somewhat responsible to, uh, uh, for the location of this uh, new facility, advised them of the, the building and uh, uh, arranged for a time for him to come and look it over and of course he indicated that he wanted to uh, he would have to talk to the management because they were focused on the west coast the uh, well along short and short of it is that uh, they did come they did look the place over they did like the building uh, but they also needed to resolve in their minds whether there was a good labor pool here. And uh, they recognized that uh, uh, we had a, a union town um, and that uh, they might have to uh, uh, deal with that if they made the decision. But they contacted uh, Stan uh, Stan advised them and, and even invited them to uh, his uh, labor management committee and uh, he worked with them uh, really to convince them we had a good labor market, that we uh, had people who were very skilled, uh, very hard working and they would be uh, you know, ready, willing and able to go to work at the drop of a hat. Cummins uh, was interested in some new approaches to manufacturing and uh, making uh, engines. And uh, uh, as a matter of fact, and I'm jumping, but uh, Stan and I attended uh, their 45th cele uh, annual celebration of their opening the plant there in Busti. Uh, and it was also, I think, the 100th anniversary of Cummins' engine uh, overall. And the, uh, uh, what, we, uh, what we saw was their updated uh, manufacturing process. And it's a, what it was and is, has been, was a team effort where uh, and instead of having a, uh, a manager uh, who would manage over, uh, over all the employees, that uh, manager would, uh, the, uh, the, the, the folks that would be manufacturing those huge engines uh, would work as a team. And any one of them at any time could take the place of the other uh, in that team concept for these big, huge engines. And I don't know if you've ever seen a truck engine, uh, but they are huge and uh, bigger than my desk. And so uh, it takes a lot of skill, really. So uh, back to Back to uh, the time that they were looking to come here, uh, uh, 
Stan had met with him, as I mentioned, and uh, he had met with him more than once, and I had met with him as well. Uh, they uh, were so interested uh, that, uh, and the county, <laughs> as well as the city, were so desperate to have them come because they were an outstanding uh, company. Uh, we couldn't have found a better company in the whole world uh, than the Cummins. So uh, Stan worked at his end, as it were, to uh, attract them and uh, interest them. And the county uh, established a labor, not labor management, the county established a uh, manpower training fund uh, to train uh, potential employees of a, uh, a factory or industry or any other business to train them even before the doors open to the new business. Mm. And uh, Cummins liked that feature because, again, they were going to be employing a new uh, set of systems uh, to try to uh, uh, develop a system that would be efficient and uh, profitable and sustainable. The, um, so we also uh, provided uh, then some other incentives. Uh, for example, they needed an improvement of a bridge that was close to the uh, factory and because it would not hold the weight of uh, semi-tractor trailers that were hauling these engines across mm -hmm. the bridge mm -hmm. to be delivered across the country. And they needed a guarantee that that would be repaired and re replaced as it was. And uh, there were some other things that, they, uh, that we assured them. We assured them a flat tax rate for the next 10 years and we um, uh, provided uh, water and sewer uh, capability uh, for them. Uh, I have the whole list of things that we did offer them, but uh, this is really about Stan and I'm talking about coming. But uh, this, why I'm dwelling on that is, is it dovetailed with what Stan uh, had uh, in mind with the Labor Management Committee, that if you can resolve those problems, uh, labor problems, uh, uh, internally without having to go on strike, um, then uh, he would have accomplished his goal and mm -hmm. that's what he did. Uh, they did uh, really like uh, that labor management concept because it demonstrated that the community was ready uh, to uh, work cooperatively uh, in terms of the labor management uh, uh, arena. Mm -hmm. Somebody wrote a book on uh, that uh, spells out a lot of what I mentioned, but uh, I just want to point out that, and it's an incredible history book, uh, I want to point out that In this book, uh, the uh, authors uh, uh, page 279, uh, located in the small city of Jamestown in southwestern most corner of New York, roughly halfway between New York and Chicago, this second facility was a sprawling 960 930,000 square foot plant built in 1968 by Art Metal Furniture Company for manufacture of office furniture. 
When the plant was constructed, it was the largest ever built for that purpose, measuring nearly a quarter of a mile in length. Cummins leased the building in April 1974 with the goal of supplying K and NH engine parts to the Charleston plant. It was a beautiful plant, recalls Jim Henderson, and it was big enough. Jamestown, in the heart of the Union country, was credible evidence that Cummins was not decentralizing its manufacturing operations to escape from Union influence. The city of 40,000, located in the southern edge of Lake Chautauqua, had a long tradition of skilled woodworkers and metal benders, many of whom were Union uh, members. I'm skipping now. By early 1970s, unemployment in Jamestown was running 10% and Union management discord was on the rise. At this point, Jamestown Mayor Stanley and Lundin took an unusual step. He established a joint labor management committee consisting of heads of local businesses and labor unions, labor organization. Although the committee never involved itself in specific negotiation, it did help dispel the kind of rumors that eventually arose during labor disputes. Lundin and his committee aggressively wooed Cummins and, according to Ted Marston, made a very strong and positive impression. We spent three days in Jamestown talking with town leaders and decided it was a highly organized community and that its leadership was really there to help us. And Stan Lundin was one of the keys. When he, was, when he came in as mayor, he said, this stuff has got to stop. We've got to find a way. And he started talking about some of the same things we were thinking about when we were working with Fred Herzberg in the Charleston plant. Hmm. So, that's uh, impressive. That, uh, that's something I'm proud of uh, mm -hmm. Stan for. Uh, among other things. Did he but, run into any issues when he was making the Labor Management Committee? Were there any heads of corporations that weren't too keen on his committee, or was everyone pretty much on board? Uh, I think folks were pretty much on board at that time. The, uh, the folks that were uh, heads of the industries, uh, you know, uh, we're tired of the, uh, well, the reputation that we had uh, that was a little unfair because there were some industries that did go on strike. Uh, and there were some uh, others that, uh, that did, but uh, they knew that the reputation uh, would harm any growth in the area. So. Uh, I think some may have dragged their feet. I was not a member of the committee. I was not involved uh, in that. Uh, all I know is it had a beneficial effect on our attempting to attract industries here, especially Cummins Engine. And uh, if you read the book, and I'm sure you won't have time to do that, but if you read the book, you'll find that they were struggling, they, Cummins, to um, come up with solutions uh, to address their labor problems as well, or worker uh, problems, uh, because they, they wanted to train them for a new system uh, to, to uh, compete with other manufacturers of, uh, of engines. If you ever had a chance to go to visit the Cummins plant, you'll get an idea of what I mean when I uh, talk about their huge engines that required real teamwork in order to manufacture a number of them to go out the door. 
uh, keep in mind that their uh, sales were international, not just uh, local. Mm -hmm. So um, I do want to, if I can find it here, I'm jumping it. If you ever wanted to look at what their operation is, they put together uh, these discs and uh, uh, it, it does describe their internal operation. They're very impressive, mm. very impressive. Mm -hmm. They uh, hire uh, women and uh, I was just hoping that by chance now, this was the photo they took of our, uh, the, after the uh, luncheon, celebrating the, their uh, uh, opening the plant here in, in Jamestown. I don't think you can make out the engines, though, that are behind us. Right. Oh, wow. You can sort of... Those are really big. It's almost as big as a person. Yeah. Yeah, right. Is this photo available online? Or I I don't think so. We hmm. can yeah, you can look it up. Cummins Engine has yeah. quite a site and uh, I'll be willing to bet you 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 would find perhaps the those discs or mm -hmm. the subject matter of, the, of those discs mm -hmm. there. Or if you're willing to forward me that picture, if you have it on your email, and then I can possibly use it for the exhibit. I'd like to go along with that section. What? Oh. The photo? Photograph? Oh, yeah. Well, you, you can have the photograph if you want. I'll... Oh. Yeah. Um, right. You can have that. Here, I... Instead of talking, I should have uh, gone through uh, my files on the Cummins Engine uh, project. Uh, yeah, these were the notes of the call that we made uh, to them, and um, when we learned that they were looking for a place. Mm -hmm. But they said they didn't want any PR job done on them and would turn off the deal. They, uh, Allison, this, he was the plant manager mm. to be, now has six very promising locations to be narrowed down to two or three in the next few weeks. So uh, that traveling salesman Were you guys came around at just all? in time. Were you guys worried at all for the other competition, other locations, or were you pretty confident oh. that Cummins would end up in James? Oh no, no, we had no confidence. Uh, you know, we didn't have computers back then, or if there were computers around, uh, they weren't as available as they are now. So we we didn't know. Uh, in fact, we some of us never heard of Cummins because we didn't buy trucks, <laughs> and with truck and um, so, uh, no, we had no confidence that, uh, uh, that they would end up here. Uh, what we had, of course, was the building, and then we had, what, uh, we had a good labor force, a good labor force, and we had, uh, potential uh, workers that would be ready to go to work at a moment's uh, notice. Um, and two, the training program uh, was awfully important. My uh, uh, industrial development uh, director, the second one, uh, uh, really put together financial packages to offer to um, uh, offer to come and uh, stand, you know, uh, address the labor management uh, aspect of it, and as I'm 
saying was one of the key people involved in attracting Cummins. And then we had another legislator, Ted Smith, from Busti, who coordinated permanent uh, municipal water supply. Mm -hmm. And Henry Weiler was our newly, well, he was the first uh, chairman of the, uh, or director of the county manpower training program. And uh, he dealt with, with Cummins. Uh, regarding the uh, putting together a labor management team. Um, and uh, Dave Dawson, who was their new industrial development director, uh, as I said, worked, worked the packages, and one of the packages dealt with uh, setting up the training program uh, for those who were going to be hired as employees. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I don't know if you want any of this to take away and if you want to look at it and then bring it back. Yeah, I can, after the exhibit, I can give everything back to you and... Okay. Yeah, that would be wonderful, thank you. Yeah, I don't know if you want to use any of this or replace it because I just slapped it to, together over the years. Uh, I can always um, make copies of them within the next week and then return the folder to you. Okay. Yeah, that would be that would be good. Yeah, this, this was the uh, Whiz Kids generate Jamestown Fizz. Yeah. Uh, one of the Whiz Kids was Stan Lundeen. Oh. So I'll. I'll give you my folders, and then uh, you could do with it what you want. But as you can see, uh, Cummins Engine was the highlight of Stan's career and mine. I, mean, I don't know if he feels that way. I think he does. But it meant so much to the community. Uh, the Cummins philosophy is so positive. They in fact, they, um, some of their workers have helped uh, do lake cleanup uh, of Chautauqua Lake, mm -hmm. uh, weeds, and uh, then there are others uh, who uh, worked on projects that help uh, the community. Uh, one of the other things they do is uh, uh, once a year, yeah, I'm sure it's once a year, uh, they will accept for the day all kinds of things that people want to junk and get rid of, mm -hmm. but uh, just haven't got the opportunity or the place uh, to do it. So um, uh, they've provided that for the community. So if you want to toss away any old, I think they used to take away TVs too. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. But I'm going to give you my folders. There's uh, a lot to read uh, in them, and, and I've mentioned quite a few. We did have an event up at uh, Busti to provide the history and the current operation of uh, mm -hmm. Cummins Engine. So if you don't mind reading a lot of old stuff and some you can just ignore, uh, I will give you the... I've been doing a lot of reading. <laughs> well, yeah, you can skip over a lot too. Yeah. This, this is what, uh, this is Cummins' uh, yeah. workbook. And they, uh, at the tail end, they did spell out the commitments that we made. Uh, and then they, they answer the question, why did Cummins uh, pick Jamestown? Uh, and they say specifically the Labor Management Committee, the Manpower Training Program, the Good School System, Governmental co Cooperation and Leadership, the Chautauqua Institute, 
an emphasis on impro improved people services was impressive. And so they tell you why they picked us. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, then they spell out the details of uh, them leasing the building and whatever taxes they were going to pay and whatever incentives there were. So I'll give you all of it and then oh, thank you. you can sift out what it is you would. I'll keep everything in order for you and just scan some documents and I'll make sure I return them back to you. Yeah, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want. Oh, this was just the invitation that mm -hmm. uh, we sent to people to come up and listen to the history. I, uh, this you don't really need. Uh, I'll give you that. And I, I'll try to track it down to see if I, I must have been. This must have been sent to me. Yeah, Yeah, because I think it looks like a mail from Outlook. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, if you could maybe forward I don't know that. if you want these. I might be able to take a clip, like take a section of that and put it into the video for the exhibit. Okay. So I might be able to work something out with it, yeah. if you don't mind me borrowing No, not those. at all. No, I think you'll find a very reason for the need for that manpower training program and, mm -hmm. and to have a labor pool that was receptive. Is that the size of it from the... Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it is a huge, huge, huge building. Mm -hmm. And what was impressive too, uh, and they do allow, uh, have some tours so people can uh, get an idea of what it's all about. But the place is spotless. It is spotless as your cleanest uh, operation would be. Um, and the reason for it is that if dust accumulates in the manufacturing process, uh, it can have an adverse effect on, uh, on the engines that they're building. And they aren't going to want to spend, they don't want to spend a lot of money uh, building an engine only to have it fail because uh, the place that was not neat and clean and, mm -hmm. and what have you. So, now, do you have any questions? I've yeah, I have a few questions. Chatted and chatted. I like this story because um, the working title for the exhibit right now is Problem Solver and Public Servant. Mm -hmm. And oh, I good. think that's definitely a story that highlights both Stan's problem solving ability and his devotion in, to the public of Jamestown and the Congressional District and then his time in New York State overall. Yeah. He was always going back to helping the community and helping right. like the labor force and housing, the drug, he was on a drug committee and everything he did has a core of the community and being a public servant. Yeah, I really right. like that story. No question. Yeah. No um, question. I guess we'll start with a kind of a basic question of what adjectives come to mind when you think of Stan Lundin? Just outstanding human being, a caring human being. Uh, we need more leaders like him, mm -hmm. nationally as well as uh, locally. And of course he was a national leader, but uh, only in a representative congressional capacity. But that's that stand. He's really all heart uh, and and capable, dedicated. Loves his country. Loves his locality. He could have moved on uh, to other, you know, territories to uh, uh, live and work and play. You know him um, well when he was a lawyer practicing in Jamestown. I didn't encounter uh, him that often in the law practice, so uh, I can't pull a story uh, 
there, and I, I know there are others in town that can regale you with uh, stories that, in fact, when you get on the internet, uh, you'll find that, uh, for example, when he was honored uh, as an attorney, uh, he gave a little short talk, and and uh, you you would get a sense of uh, his sense of humor too. That's really what is <laughs> very warming about him. He's got a great sense of humor, great sense of humor. He'll come back from an event, and there'll be something, uh, some incident that. Uh, uh, will bring a smile to your face. Yeah. Um, you were you worked with Stan throughout his time as mayor. Did you you worked with him when he was in Congress and lieutenant governor as well, right? Or well, we would contact him whenever there was legislation we mm -hmm. uh, thought would be beneficial or harmful, one or the other. <laughs> um, I worked at the state about the same time he did. I was Commissioner of Agriculture while he was uh, Lieutenant Governor, and I didn't have occasion to cross his path because the uh, Governor would have him go to various events and, and uh, handle uh, problems that uh, were out there that the Lieutenant Governor should take care of. Um, so I really can't recall specifically uh, any anything at any one of those levels uh, that I can highlight. It's just generally speaking, he was a good person to have around, yeah. uh, and to be able to contact and try to get some help if he could provide it, and if he could, he did, um, and he didn't put you off. He. Uh, uh, would lay it on the line as far as uh, what he could do and what he could. Mm -hmm. The blue ribbon ticket, um, Pat Kinney said it was more so a theme for when he was running for mayor. Well, oh, it was a group, oh yeah, uh, it was a, a group of candidates who really had never sought public office. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, if it hadn't been for Stan, would never have. <laughs> uh, but he, he wanted some uh, who didn't want to be a lifetime politician, uh, but to, who were willing to address the problems even though the issues uh, were unpopular or solutions would be unpopular. Un <laughs> unpopular. So, uh, that was the Blue Ribbon Committee. Yeah, I, I uh, respected him for that, and uh, I wish I'd thought of it. In fact, I wish I'd thought of a lot of things that he had, had done. But uh, he was a good, a good mayor to have if you were county uh, involved in county government too. Did he? I remember reading that economically. Jamestown had a lot on its plate, especially with the Social Security, or what was it? I'm trying to think of what it was in the hospital, and that Stan tried to make legislation that would lift the burden economically from Jamestown. Can you do you know any of those or any of his work there? <laughs> yeah, I know. I know one when I was uh, in county government that uh, affected. Um, County government, and 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 help the city. But uh, and <laughs> it's interesting that you mention it. What it was, uh, we Jamestown had a welfare department. Okay. That is, a department that furnished uh, um, money and attention and uh, assistance uh, to uh, people uh, who had lost their jobs, who didn't have jobs, who were some might be a bit handicapped and the like, and and so uh, they also, uh, the welfare department would take care of the medical bills that these people would have, and the cost of the welfare department would obviously 
come out of the real estate taxes. Mm. And uh, that, so Jamestown was one of two cities that had its own welfare department. Uh, the rest of them uh, relied on a county welfare department uh, that uh, levied the tax countywide and provided the services countywide. So uh, Stan and, and the other mayor, but uh, Stan uh, took the leadership in legislation that uh, would uh, transfer any city welfare department to the county's budget and to the county's responsibility. So I'm sitting up as uh, in Mayville uh, on a working on county budgets, and uh, we did not have any expense for the county welfare in in Jamestown that I can recall, none at all, until Stan sought this legislation um, that um, uh, would transfer the responsibility. So uh, that I don't think I took any uh, public opposition to it. I wasn't happy because it was going to add, you know, and I don't remember the number, but it'd be uh, probably a good a million dollars to our budget mm -hmm. uh, or more. And uh, it uh, then relieved the city's budget. Uh, but it worked out all right. Uh, and so th that's an example of what y you raised in your question, or what I assume you were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, the welfare, that was... Um, yeah. Yeah, that was probably... That was another big problem that he solved for the city of Jamestown, but then put it on the county. But uh, as, you know, on the reflection, it was probably more efficient that that be done in that fashion. They, uh, a lot of the medical providers were uh, in Jamestown. The, uh, uh, you know, the constituents were Chautauqua County residents. So it was a natural thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, uh, it, Stan did it, and it was for the benefit, too, uh, of the recipients mm -hmm. to have a more coordinated uh, program rather than have two welfare systems within the county. Mm -hmm.